Hello everybody, this is Video Boy, and welcome to Archpillar Devlog number 43. So there's a lot this episode, so I'm going to start off with something pretty basic. Uh, so the first thing I want to show you guys in this episode is I made some changes to the Holobit login system. Um, so now it doesn't use a username anymore, it uses an email address. It's just a lot easier to remember and there's uh, less fields to enter, so it just makes more sense to use an email. Eventually we're going to add a way to change the email and the password, but uh, this is what we have for now. Um, also, the login system is a lot more secure now and it's a lot less prone to crashes. So uh, we've worked on it a little bit and uh, made it a lot more bug free. And uh, we also have a banning system in place to prevent bots from making too many queries to it. So that's pretty good. Alright, so let's get on to some changes in Archipelo. So you may have seen the sneak peek video that came out last weekend showing off the new NPC system. The only problem with that video is that it doesn't really talk about the major potential behind the system. I spent quite a bit of time on it and it's very powerful. On Twitter I mentioned that it's even possible to make dialogue trees that change depending on almost any condition you can think of. Uh, the example I gave on Twitter was of hair color. So like for example this isn't very practical but the game could have a separate NPC dialogue uh, like path if the player's hair is green for example. Um, that's not really practical but uh, a more practical example would be like uh, just say a certain quest is completed then it will go into a dialogue path that gives them a reward and thanks them. Uh, but it's, it's very detailed and you can go very in depth with it which is pretty awesome. And they can also perform actions when certain dialogues are open. So eventually, once um, once we add quests, the NPCs will be able to add quests to the player once certain dialogues are opened. Um, and they'll also be able to give rewards to players for completing the quests. And also, NPC dialogue messages can be interruptible, meaning that when you talk with a certain NPC that has an interruptible dialogue, you can simply just walk away and leave the conversation. So in some RPGs it can be a bit annoying if you start talking to a useless NPC and then you have to keep pressing the button to um, finish the conversation so you can leave. Uh, but this is there to prevent that. So if the NPC is useful and uh, we think when we're making him that you should really read everything he has to say, then we won't make him interruptible. But if it's just some like uh, villager or something that's just talking about something that's not really useful, then we'll just allow you to um, walk away from the conversation. The system has also made it possible to lock players out of a conversation if they move after the conversation started. So players won't be able to cheat and talk to NPCs that are out of their reach. So like just say you're talking to a shopkeeper or something, just say you start moving somewhere, uh, you won't be able to talk to the shopkeeper unless you're uh, right inside of you and you can actually, uh, well you're within the collision of them. So. Uh, yeah, that prevents players from moving across the map and then still being able to talk to the shopkeeper. Uh, so that's pretty good. I also wanted to show you guys this notation system that I added in real quick. Um, so basically, it allows you to write out these notations so you can change the color of the text. Uh, to, like right in the middle of the text. So it's kind of like uh, if you guys played like Minecraft on a server or something, you can change the color. Um, and you can also put certain things in there that are dynamic. Uh, so just say you put this tag, uh, the end tag, it'll put the username of the player who's looking at it. And also the T tag will put the date of the client that's looking at it, which is pretty cool. I've also implemented what I call a flag system. So I don't really know how other games call it, but that's what I call it. And basically flags are just proof uh, to the game world that you've completed certain events and that you have triggered those flags. So for example, uh, we can see when the player talks to the sign for the first time, it gives a welcome message, but the second time or any time after that, it gives a message saying it is annoyed. Um, so the way I've done this was that when you first uh, finish talking to the sign for the first time, it sets a flag on the player saying that you've talked to the sign. So then the next time or any time after that, that the player talks to the sign, it checks if that flag was triggered. And if it is, then it changes the conversation to say something like it's being annoyed, like you can see here. Uh, so this can be used for countless things, such as making sure players only do a certain quest once and not over and over again. Alright, so now on to entities. So I've added a hard property on entity collision boxes. 
So this property determines whether a player can walk through that collision box, or basically any other entity can walk through it or not. An example of this is with the signs. So before adding this, it would be impossible to prevent the player to walk through a signpost unless we put like a tile underneath the sign that has a collision or something. But now we can do it easily so the player can't walk through the signpost. So that's pretty good. And eventually we're going to make it more dynamic. So for example, we can have like a cave entrance entity and that would only be open to players who have triggered a certain flag for an example. Uh, so just say they need to talk to an NPC and then after they talk to him, then the, f the cave entrance would be open. Um, so if they triggered the flag, then the collision box would not prevent them from entering, so they'd be able to go in the cave. And the final major feature that I want to talk about that I've added was multi-language support. So this is really cool, I wanted to add it for a while and it's finally in the game. So it's now really easy to add new languages to the game. So basically how it works is there are keys that have corresponding values. So in game, when you need to access some text, like uh, when coding the game, I use the key and send it to the language manager and then the language manager returns the value uh, associated with that key in the language that's chosen by the user. So I haven't added any dialogue to change the language yet, um, but as soon as we start adding some languages other than English, then I'll be sure to create that. Um, and if any of you speak well in English and some other language, please let us know in the comments and maybe you can help us out with some translation and we'll be sure to reward you with uh, in-game goods once the update comes out. So whether it be like in-game money or something, we'll, we'll figure it out. Uh, but eventually I think we'll create some way to automatically accept translations uh, with some sort of voting system, uh, kind of like Reddit I guess, so people would submit translations and then people who know that language could upvote it if they think it's good or downvote if they think it's bad. Uh, that kind of idea. And people who have uh, translations that are widely accepted will get rewarded with in-game money. And then the translations will go into the game. Uh, we'll implement that some uh, probably much later. Uh, it's not really needed right now. I prefer to work on the actual game features. But it's something to think about that would be cool in the future. So there are a bunch of minor changes that have been made to the game. Uh, so one is that we fixed the color picker and the character creator. So before there was some weird uh, offset thing, like the first uh, color button had a spacing in between uh, the second one, which was weird, and that's all fixed now. Uh, world maps now have a border, uh, so you can't leave the world map. I added padding in certain game menus, uh, so the buttons or other elements aren't clumped together, so it looks a lot nicer. I also implemented a character limit on player names, so before you're actually able to make character names that were really big and sometimes even so big that it would crash um, the, uh, the database server. So I've uh, prevented that completely now. Uh, players can also move while windows are open in the game screen, which is pretty cool. So you can have like a chat window open and still be able to move around. And also, the game is completely mobile compatible now, so all the text boxes trigger a prompt for mobile users only, uh, so it makes it easier for them to type. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all. Uh, also, as you can, guys can probably notice, the UI has changed. Uh, this is not te uh, permanent at all. This is just temporary UI. It doesn't really look better than the one that was on before, uh, but this one is more ready to be edited by an actual artist down the line. So. Uh, it'll be a lot easier to get a much nicer looking UI in the future with uh, with this one. Uh, so that's why I've done that. So that's a lot of stuff that we've added uh, since the last devlog. And for the next one, uh, here are the goals. So I plan on working on the inventory. Uh, so the back end was done a while ago when we made the item system. I believe that was back in June or something. Uh, but there's no actual visual uh, part of... Um, the inventory and item system. So we're going to add um, an inventory menu so you guys can modify your inventory, uh, drop and pick up items, and also uh, equip stuff. Uh, so that's going to be pretty awesome and it's going to be uh, getting ready for the uh, combat uh, edition which will probably be after next devlog. I also uh, want to create a system to send flags uh, that we talked about earlier. 
to the client so that they can have uh, visual updates. So like we talked about the uh, cave entrance before, uh, just say a certain flag is triggered, then we would make the cave look open. But if the flag isn't, then we put like uh, some rubble or something in front of it. So um, if you're on a client or running the game with a player that uh, triggered that flag, uh, it'll look different for you than other people playing the game. Okay, so this is pretty much starting to end the devlog. Uh, I just wanted to mention uh, that the GitHub repo has changed a little bit. These changes were actually made before last devlog, I just forgot to talk about them in the devlog. Uh, so the server code is no longer being updated, and this is mostly for security reasons. So uh, up until a certain date, you can see the server code, but after that date, uh, we stopped updating it on the GitHub. So um, people won't be able to see it anymore. But the client code is still there, so uh, the client code is still being updated. And if you guys want to check out the latest client code, uh, go to github.com slash videoboy slash archipelago. It's the same as the last one. Um, so you can go there and you can see the client code. And uh, if you've checked the GitHub before, you may have noticed that this is a lot more stripped down than the way it used to be. Uh, so now if you actually download this whole git into a zip, it's like one megabyte. Uh, but before, I think it was 250 megabytes or something. And the reason for this is that we removed all the Android, iOS, and GWT files. Um, we're not, we're going to still support those platforms, it's just for the Git itself, we thought people would mostly only care about the desktop code. Um, and also it takes a lot less space this way. So that's good. And if you're, uh, for educational purposes, if you still want to check out the server code, um, and along with the client, uh, since we stopped updating the server code, uh, you can go check it out at github.com slash videoboy slash archipelago old and you'll be able to see a working version of the game and the server. Uh, we're also currently uh, in the process of getting a new pixel artist for the game um, and there's still a couple of days to apply uh, so if any of you are pixel artists and you want to apply for it uh, we'll have a link in the description to the teamups.net page, and you can apply there. Alright, that pretty much wraps it up for this devlog. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like. And if you have any friends who would find these videos interesting, please share the channel with them. And subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.